Oh, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the chat realm interview show. Uh, joining me today is the prolific podcaster, wonderful, wonderful writer, and all-around abacus aficionado, Tom Merritt. Hi, I'm Ace Detect in the chat room. Yeah, it's Ace Detect in the chat. I should I should make everybody do that, like it's an AA meeting. Yes, <laughs> I'm Ace Detect uh, and I'm a chatter. And I'm a, chatter. I'm a diamonder. I'm a diamond clubber. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to call you Alex, but it's hard. Like, I just want to. Uh, it's gonna be natural to say Tinvec, and I now say Tinvec instead of Tinenvec. Yeah, that's least... <laughs> well, I know that second N is important to you, but uh, um, he's just. I was just trying to not buddy. leave out any N's. Yeah. <laughs> when I first started pronouncing your chat room name. Oh, exactly. So, uh, speaking of your chat handle, Ace Detect, I'm, I'm sure you've uh, told the story before, but where where did you come up with that? Uh, yeah, in fact, I think there's still a bit.ly link <laughs> out there somewhere uh, that goes to me telling Dick B. Bartolo about it. But the short version is that I was reading Raymond Chandler novels and I was signing up for a second ISP. Uh, and so I had, I had AT&T WorldNet as my home ISP, but they didn't offer you any free web space. Mm. So I decided to sign up for, here I was being clever, I decided to sign up for concentric.net's uh, shell plan and get their free five megabytes of web space there and, and have a website. This is 1996, I think. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, so I sign up, and when they ask for the name, I type in Ace Detective, and they're like, character limit, Ace D Tech, with no T at the end. And I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. So I go on in, and then I find out that the shell account that I signed up for, even though it's a beautiful $7 a month, does not include the free web space. <laughs> so I cancel oh, no. that. I'm like, crap. So I cancel that account, and I go and I find the dial-up account that actually comes with the free web space, and I decide, well, I'll just cancel WorldNet altogether, and I'll just go move to Concentric. Uh, and the only reason I didn't want to cancel WorldNet is because I already had an email address there, but I'm like, well, whatever. I'll change my email address. Big deal. Uh, it's 1996. Nobody cares. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I sign up for Concentric.net's full dial-up service, get the five megabytes of, of space, uh, and when I go to type in the username, I'm like, well, I, I guess I'll just do the same one I did, Ace Detect. And it says, oh, that username is taken. <laughs> and it's taken by me on the canceled shell account right. that I just canceled. And I know, I'm like, I know that's why it's gone. So I'm like, uh, I, I was in a rush. I wasn't in a rush for no reason. It was just personal impatience. So I'm like, uh, A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T. -E -E I'll just leave a letter out. And it'll kind of read like Ace Detective, and I'll actually get the T in on the end because yeah, I'll go. leave I'll leave an E out, and then that worked. They're like, yeah, nobody has that crazy username. <laughs> um, and then from there on, it became my default. When I went to sign up for something, I'd always try Team Merit, and it would always be taken because not only are there other Tom Merits in the world, but there's Tim Merits and Todd Merits and whatever. So I just so like, well, Ace Detect's never taken, so I'll just I'll just use that because uh, it's never taken, and uh, then it stuck. Yeah, that's actually a little bit of a similar story at the end to why I have mine. It's I had to come up with something that wasn't taken. I have a common name, and you know, so that's what I use now. So, oh, that's excellent. That's actually a, a far more interesting story than than one might think. You know, it's the ISP that's swap. That's exactly the opposite <laughs> of what Dick DiBartolo said when I told him that story. Well, you know, he's he's more of a gadget guy and, and doesn't understand the nuances of, of how important five megabytes of, of web hosting space was. In, he's actually in pretty gracious. I think he was just he was just having a good time. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, oh, I, and Bobby Rolls says it's bit.ly slash ace detect. So oh. I guess I guess you can go watch that alternate version. I probably just told this version better, maybe. Possibly. That's awesome. So you are obviously into a lot of tech stuff. But what do you like to do outside of the tech realm uh, when you get away from the computer and such? I like to run. I, I go I go running four times a week. I, I, I enjoy running because it gives me a chance to listen to podcasts and audiobooks, <laughs> frankly. Uh, and it's good for me. And I much prefer running over going to a gym. Uh, and my wife's the opposite. She needs to go to a gym. She's like, I have to go to a gym, usually a class, because I need, I need a place to go, a destination to achieve, and I need someone there to structure it so that I'm forced into oh, doing sure. it. Whereas I don't want anything to give me an excuse not to go. If I have to get in a car to go somewhere, that's one excuse. Oh, I don't really want to get in the car. If I have to sign up for a class, oh, I don't really want to sign up for the class. Whereas running, I basically put on the clothes I'm going to run in, and I walk out the door. So it's, it's, it's easy. Yeah, it makes it really, for the, really easy. 
it's easy to get started. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I used to I used to do a lot of bike riding. I should actually get back into that. Um, mostly because I didn't enjoy the uh, joint pain from running because <laughs> I you know, got a lot of knee and, and ankle pain and stuff. Yeah, that's going to ruin so. it for you if you've got any kind of joint pain, which I, you know, knock on wood, luckily I've, I've mostly avoided. Right, but you can get basically the same experience riding a bike, and it's much lower impact for you. So it's it's a lot. Um, My wife just got a bike for Christmas, uh, and so. Her uh, her plan is to start doing more bike riding, which is going to make me get my bike all up in tune and start bike riding with her too. Hopefully, all right. well, see, you guys live where you can do it any time of the year. Really, it's I mean, you don't have to ride through snow like we do here in Wisconsin. <laughs> no, no, and in fact, it's even less rainy in LA than it was in San Francisco. Part of the year, definitely several times a year in San Francisco, I would have to put on rain gear if I wanted to run, and I got oh, so right. in the habit. I tricked myself to be so in the habit. It's so funny. I talk about like, I don't want any excuses not to run. Rain is an easy one, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I have gotten myself at this point so in the habit of having to run that the obsessive compulsive part of my brain is just like, nope, you must run. It is one of the things you do <laughs> on this day. It's on your task list. And so I would wrap up in all this rain gear and, and actually go run. Uh, and that even that, I don't have to do that often. Maybe once every two years. Or... Oh, yeah, I suppose. Well, it depends on how much you, you go running in the winter, too. <laughs> For your, well, I guess you'd, if you do it every day of the week, then yeah, you end, I try to do it four, four days, days a week, week yeah, rather pretty constantly. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. That's, I should get into exercise a little bit more, at least some cardio, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it was the doctor telling me like you need to you need to do something more active uh, and 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 keep you know keep your blood pressure down. It was more, mostly blood pressure than weight. Oh right. Uh, with me, uh, and I was like, all right, fine, I'll start doing that. Right. <laughs> well, awesome. Uh, so you're I don't an avid, want to die. right? I don't want to die either. <laughs> so you're an you're an avid Twitterer, uh, as as noted by actually many tweets of yours. <laughs> um, what's what's the favorite uh, Twitter account that you follow? One that one that has the uh, most interesting stuff, maybe or. You know that's a harder question for me to answer these days because I don't. I used to like in the early days of Twitter, I would catch up on Twitter, right? Like right. if I hadn't read Twitter. In a few hours, I would go back and I would read every post of every person I followed until I got to the point where I had last read them. I used to do uh, that I don't too. even do that anymore. No. I have TweetDeck, that I have a friends list and a family list, and then the full list. <laughs> and I just kind of scan all three of them. I don't even, even on the friends and family list, I don't go back and keep caught up. So it's more like who are the people that generally entertain me? And that changes a lot. I have to say probably one of my more recent favorites uh on the on the just like tends to say things that i want to interact side is sam sykes the author mm. uh who's just he's a funny guy he's a smart guy he's a little bit of a of a shit starter so <laughs> you know i'll see him like picking little like funny fights with other authors and stuff um john scalzi is another author actually that i really enjoy uh chatting with on the twitter sometimes uh and then um uh, bored Elon Musk is my most recent Ugh. favorite, just like sitting back and just finding out what did he say recently. Yeah, there's there's some pretty funny ones on there. Um, I've, I've always liked uh, Riker Googling. Did you, ever, did you ever see that one? A, no, no, I haven't. What's yeah, that one about? It's like if, if William T. Riker from, you know, um, um, Next Generation was, was searching Google for things. And it's like one or two tweets a month will come up through there and it's just hilarious crazy things like um it's, like i think one of the more recent ones was like plasma burn first aid or something like home first aid or something for plasma burn. but it's all in in disjointed google search speak so it's, it's yeah hilarious. right right though. so it's 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 supposedly capturing what he would be typing in on google yeah like if you were searching for something for whatever that's reason cool. yeah that's very a nice good one. so if you were to gain a superpower, what would that superpower be? And what's the first thing you would do with it? Uh, I answer this question differently every time. So I don't think I really have a superpower that I personally like long for. But <laughs> the one that the one that's that that today at this moment when you're asking me that popped to the front of my mind is time travel, uh, the ability to to travel through time and for two reasons, you know, one would be to use my powers for good and, you know, stop things from happening. Although I don't believe you can. Yeah. Honestly, like, 
Like if I'm going to travel through time and stop an accident from happening, then the accident doesn't ever happen. And I'm, I'm I, so you don't have I, to go back to do it, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know there's like the infinite possibility tree, uh, which can kind of take care of that and say, oh well, no, you 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 didn't stop the accident, for, you didn't change the timeline, you just shifted to a different timeline. But right. that has its own problems because what about the me that was in that timeline already? But um, <laughs> you know, I do I do realize that like electrons can go back in time and balance equations. But that's my point: is they always balance the equation. They don't they don't change you know the course of themselves. Anyway. Not to get off on a tangent about talking about <laughs> quantum electrodynamics and time travel, but I, I would like also that. like to just go and observe history. Yeah. Uh, I am fascinated with what it was really like in the past, as recently as the 1940s, all the way back to you know ancient Roman times and, and, and in Britain and the pre-Roman times and Babylonia and, and, and all of that. Like I am always shocked when I see – have you ever seen those older color photographs? From eras that you usually only see in black and white. Oh yeah, yeah. When they finally like restore yeah. them to color, or, or they find a piece of you know some old color ones. Yeah, they find yeah. like a. Yeah, and you're always like, whoa, the world looked so much more, u usual than yeah. I expected. Like <laughs> right? no, black that's and white exactly gives what it I think. steel, and then you see it in color, and you're like, oh, actually, that looks pretty close. You know, like if it's corrected for color, it's not the faded color of right. like a '70s photograph. You're like, yeah, that actually doesn't look that different. You know, different styles, whatever. So I, I would like to see those sorts of things, especially in ancient, more ancient history. Like right. how many things that people do and say and act are totally still modern and how many things would be entirely different, which obviously right. a lot of them would be. Maybe you go back to the Egyptians and they say, dude, you know, like <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Or, 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 or they have a, you know, even more likely would be like, they have a word that means dude, but they use it exactly the same way. And you're like, they're saying dude, like that's, right. <laughs> that's a thing. Or, they, or just, you know, tones of voice, expressions, playing dice. I don't know. Yeah. Just, there's, cause I have had that experience where you see something in an old movie or you hear a phrase in an old movie and it just strikes you as anachronistically modern yeah and then you real like realize that well certain things just haven't changed that much yeah that's true as, as tvz gone asks would you do this in a blue box uh <laughs> it could be a blue box <laughs> i would prefer the chameleon circuit were fixed though yeah. so yeah. it doesn't always have to be a blue box it'd be really helpful at times <laughs> yeah especially in egypt right you know blue box that's gonna stick out Sphinx, right. man. Everybody's just like, oh, there's a new Sphinx there. I didn't know that was getting built. Whatever. Walk on by. Yeah, second one. <laughs> well, speaking of traveling, uh, if you could move to any planet, uh, what planet would that be? And like, where would you live? <sighs> they haven't discovered it yet because I want to live on a planet where I don't have to wear a spacesuit all the time. Well, so that's true. That rules well, out all fiction. planets in our solar system. Uh, they can be until we you do can some have a space habitat, you know, they could they could drop a hab yeah. for you. I, I, I'm not claustrophobic per se, but um, I mean, it, when you say live, I'm assuming like that's it. I'm picking up stakes and that's what it's going to be. When you say, if you say visit, I would, I would visit any planet. I would oh. love to visit Mars. No, yeah, but I almost move. feel like Venus is more appealing now because we have so many pictures of Mars that, and this is ridiculous to say, but like I kind of have a feeling what Mars looks like, <laughs> which is really awesome. Obviously not true, right. but I have more of an idea of what Mars is like than I do of Venus. Venus is a total mystery because we can't even see the surface. Well, it can be a fictional planet, too. It doesn't have to be a, a real one. Real ones are oh. less interesting. Was I literal <laughs> netting you? I apologize. No, that's all right. Uh, now, I, the planets are very hard to live <laughs> on. Uh, oh, fictional man. planets. Well, now, now, now you're talking. I would, well, Ryza, who wouldn't? Well, right? sure. At least for a vacation, but I probably wouldn't want to live there. Where would I want to live? Um, you know, I always, I don't want to live, let me be clear, I do not want to live on Waterworld, <laughs> on the movie Waterworld, but there was a planet in one of the first Star Wars comic book sequels that was all water. Mm. Uh, and, the, and it was like archipelagos, right? It was all, it was islands and boats and water. Uh, and I'd be, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to live on a planet like that. It's probably too monoculture to actually exist, but you know, the idea of just living on a planet that's that's all Hawaii sounds fantastic. Yeah, it does sound sound really interesting. Just just be able to hop from island to island and 
you know, I, I wonder if the distance is like, because I mean, you're talking about a whole planet. Would they be like, would the each island chain be too far apart? I mean, that'd be interesting to. Well, I, if I remember the comic right, they had like airspeeder type ships that could just oh, sure. take them from one island to the next. So travel time was not a big deal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, so you, when you have air jet skis, that's, you know, a lot easier. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, now you're talking. Air so, jet yeah, skis. I could use one of those. It's much better than a Segway. <laughs> Probably more useful. <laughs> right. So, uh, what is that on your mantle? <laughs> There's all sorts of interesting stuff. So, I mean, I, I see Gavin McCloud, which those who, who are familiar with, with Current Geek will know. But, uh, and some, you know, your Alia Octa Est. Uh, uh, yeah, poster. yeah, Scott Johnson art for LA Act Est. I see some um, FSL uh, pennant over there in the corner yeah. and a Diamond mm -hmm. Club logo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what else am I missing up there that, that we don't well, maybe the, we don't recognize. All the way to the left is a drink Kingsland beer, which is a Stephen King reference. Mm. Uh, it's a it's a reference to. <sighs> I want to. Uh, what's the. Uh, Peter Straub and Stephen King each wrote half of, they each wrote a novel that were half of a story that the other one finished. I want to say it's Monkey's Paw. Mm. I could be that. Anyway, it's in the Dark Tower universe as pretty much everything Stephen King wrote was. Right. Uh, and Kingsland Beard fits into that. Uh, the blue thing is a globe of the universe. So the idea is like the earth is in the center of that globe and that's what the stars look like. So it's almost a reverse look at the the night sky. Oh yeah, that's good. Uh, Let me move your video a little so they can see that. There we go. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Maybe I'll I'll just look at your video. Oh, you're okay. um, then the uh, yellow thing uh, is a slide rule. That was my grandfather's slide rule. <laughs> I wasn't too far off with the abacus uh, reference. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, Gavel McLeod is sitting on a buzz out loud coaster that Joe from Hawaii made. <laughs> uh, with with his laser engraving, uh, over here th you can barely see it, but <laughs> there's uh, the moon. That's a, a moon globe, oh, and sure. the picture behind it is actually my great grandfather John, his wife Louisa, uh, and their their sons and daughters. Uh, the little baby of which is my grandfather William. Oh, excellent! That's very cool. Yeah, get you back in the middle there. <laughs> Uh, there's a, a DTNS mug that someone made for me in the early days of DTNS. It's not the one that's up on the store. Uh, and there's a copy of Starcrossed by Joel Duggan. Oh, nice. Yeah, you Ooh. have a, a handcrafted DTNS mug. <laughs> yeah, it was somebody. Here, I, I have a closer up version <laughs> uh, with the other do. logo because we, <laughs> we hadn't settled on a logo yet. Uh, but yeah, this uh, guy who does printing stuff, he, he like made some cord killer stuff for us and DTNS mugs. And it's like, hey, I just wanted to do this for you. So. Oh, that's awesome. No, of course you have one right next to you. You even so. have. <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously, you have a, a bag of holding or something right there and avoid an, into the <laughs> nether realm. I'm, I'm not sure what's. <laughs> It's a bit of a con. Uh, on the one hand, I am doing the show always in our downstairs room, which is essentially storage, right? It's all of sure. the other things in the room. So there's like all my books, a bunch of toys, general stuff. But really what I do is I, I wait until I hear a reference that I know I have something for, and then I just <laughs> grab it. And it makes it seem like... I have this endless supply of things, but if you're really paying attention, like references go by all the time that I don't grab. Oh, sure. Grab something to it, illustrate. It's so. just funny because it, it's and it's always different. Is the thing because it is so. But the, the storage space, storage space thing makes makes much more sense because that's kind of what my office is too. Yeah. Is. So there, there's bookshelves right there, and there's a bunch of things sitting on the bookshelves. Uh, anything that I ever use on a show or stickers and things are are sitting right here. Now there are more bookshelves over there, and then there's a closet with all kinds of clothing and record albums and knickknacks and stuff right over there. So, all right. that's, that's really interesting. <laughs> um, so I've heard you talk, you like to cook uh, sometimes. What is your favorite meal to cook? Right now, um, I found a meatloaf recipe on Epicurious uh, that I've, I have been trying not to make too often so we get tired of it, but it, it comes out great every time. Really? And I'm it's basically carrots, celery, onions, uh, bacon, uh, ground pork, ground beef. Ooh, yeah, yeah uh, I might and, have to have you send that to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I will. To remind me when we're done, I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, and it, and and there's some weirdness. You you have to grind up some um, oh allspice, mm. uh, and 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 dice prunes in a food processor. Interesting. Uh, it's not that many prunes, and you actually dice them with the bacon. You don't even cook the bacon, uh, and and then you you basically it's a meatloaf, right? So you mold all right. of that stuff in, and you mix it around, and then you cook it. And you and I'm not suggesting you eat raw bacon. You cook <laughs> the entire loaf until it's <laughs> right. done. Uh, but the baking sort of cooks out into the rest of the meat, and the prunes just kind of provide just a, a subtle flavor in the background as does the allspice yeah that little bit um, of earthy sweetness almost yeah yeah, yeah it's really it's, it, and and you use a little um apple cider vinegar mm, as well okay. and it turns out great every time yeah that sounds really i've been looking for a good meatloaf recipe i mean i can make standard you know normal meatloaf but it's never like amazing you know and i'm don't really feel like having it all that often <laughs> But. Well, yeah, th that's the thing. It's like you can burn out of that. But this is not meatloaf like I think of meatloaf. I think of the meatloaf my mom used to make. God bless her. Uh, it was, you know, it was breadcrumbs, beef, some ketchup on top, right. a little bit of salt, you know. Basically. It's fine. It was great. Uh, but but it was nowhere near the fatty goodness of this Epicurious recipe. Right. Oh, that sounds amazing. So, uh, yeah, definitely send that to me. <laughs> But uh, so last week I was actually talking to Jury. I don't know if you caught that episode yet, but I asked him for his picks on FSL, and uh, I'm curious who your picks are for this coming season. All right, uh, here's the thing: FSL is always unpredictable. Uh, if for anybody who doesn't know, the FSL is is a uh, a league uh, that that competes every summer. Uh, our summer it competes in different times depending on where in the universe you live but it's teams from all over and and every year a couple of teams get relegated uh, because they don't do as well and a couple of teams get elevated and this year uh, the Cheyenne Mountain Gators and the Los Angeles Guardians of the Galaxy uh, have been elevated so those are two unknowns uh, the the Guardians have an amazing squad uh, there's a lot of buzz around them they're new on the scene but people seem to love them and the question is, can they pull together the way they did in the past? Can they have the consistency uh, to compete? Cheyenne Mountain Gators are, let's face it, they're old, but they're venerable. Uh, yeah. And so they, they took a while to get here. They were the fan vote in. Uh, and the question for them is, is there still something there uh, of their former greatness that can compete? And you're up against some tough teams here. The New York Avengers are unassailable. Uh, the New Look Coruscant Senators, which for the first time uh, are now non-Empire owned. Right. And I think they are going to, you know, unlike, let's be honest, they slept walked through the, the past couple of seasons. I think they're going to awaken this season. I think we're going to see something new from them. Uh, and in the Western Division, you've got Ponyville Phillies, Scarrow Exterminators, and the Gallifrey Time Lords, uh, all of which are strong. Now, I know... Justin doesn't like Ponyville, uh, but they had a strong season last year. And uh, don't forget the Cylon Raiders. I'm actually wearing their shirt <laughs> awesome. right now uh, in the Eastern Division. So this is anybody's. This is anybody's league. If I had to pick, I would guess we're going to see an Avengers Senators Eastern Division playoff. We're probably going to see a Guardians surprise. I, I think Scarrow might have it over Gallifrey in the West. Uh, and then I don't think the Guardians have enough gumption, enough experience at this point to make it all the way to the end. I, I think we might be seeing a, a Chorus and Scarrow finale. That's interesting. I, I'm actually real interested to see what the uh, Cheyenne Mountain Gators are going to be doing this year, too. Because, uh, you know, like you said, they got elevated into the league and, and it may have taken a while, but they always, always get out of a situation. They get, the, get themselves straightened up, come back get them you know come back to the bench and and keep on going for more so uh i, I mean they've and been it depends around on the starting five uh yeah. you know that the, what what team are they going to play is it going to be a younger team is it going to be older team you're going to be led by o'neill or not i mean I, that it makes a difference what team you're seeing when you see these guys play definitely definitely so it, it it'll be interesting if nothing else yeah i can't wait to i'm hoping to see a lot of teal uh, this season because he as the big man uh, I think he's essential to their success yeah he's, he's bound to bring down some points and it, it's gonna be good gonna be good games to watch no matter what yeah 
Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, everybody can find you on Twitter at Acetec. That's A C E D T E C T. Yes. <laughs> or, that's uh, right. And and you can go to Tom Merritt on Twitter, and that is spelled out if you can't remember how to spell. Oh, okay, that works too. <laughs> and then you've got uh, TomMerritt.com as well. Two M's, two R's, and two T's. And that's uh, right. Any anything else that that you want to plug that I missed? Uh, any of your um, thousand shows that you do, or <laughs> yeah, I mean, TomMerritt dot com is the best place to go if you want to find out about what shows I do. Uh, if you don't know, uh, the one thing that I'm excited about right now is Citadel Thirty Two, uh, the fiction that I just published. It is available uh, as a free PDF, as a Kindle download, as a print and EPUB from Lulu dot com, uh, and it's about. Uh, two storylines intertwining. One is someone on a moon base that is trying to survive on their own after being cut off from Earth, and another is a monk of the Citadel on Earth who is exploring a bit of the past uh, to discover what happened uh, in the apocalyptic scenario that, that caused the Earth to be cut off from the moon, uh, and their stories sort of run in parallel. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to take a flyer on it, check out TomMerrittBooks.com. Yeah, that sounds real interesting. I'll have to check that out. Well, excellent. Again, thank you very much for joining me. Um, you can catch more of these uh, questionings at tinvec.com slash dd. There's uh, RSS and iTunes subscriptions. Uh, links are there as well. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, thanks for joining me, Tom. Real fun. <laughs>